What's going on, everybody? You're watching New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's show, we're going to break down the idea about Emmanuel quickly getting a massive contract extension from the New York Knicks. Hoops Hypes, Michael Scotto sat down with Ian Begley and Stefan Bondi, and they talked about a whole bunch of things surrounding the New York Knicks, and you can go read that article down in the comment section. But what we're going to talk about in today's show is how they explored the idea that Emmanuel quickly could get around a four-year, $100 million extension. We'll talk about that in today's show. But first, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, because if the Knicks Give a massive extension to Emmanuel quickly. One, we're going live here on the channel. And two, we're going to keep you guys up to date with everything surrounding the orange and blue all summer long. So if you are looking for daily videos on the latest Knicks news and rumors, go down right now and hit that big red sub button. This is what Michael Scotto had to say about Emmanuel quickly. He said, the Knicks are going to have to make a decision on quickly if they are going to extend him or put him as a bigger part of a trade package. He has certainly increased his trade value after being a finalist for the Sixth Man of the Year award. In talking with people around the league, this is what I've gathered as far as looking at his value. At worst, the floor would be four years, $80 million. Then you're getting into a conversation of, to make sense for quickly, is it in the four-year, $100 million range? And whether it's $20 million per year, $25 million per year. I think Knicks fans need to come to the understanding that Emmanuel quickly is going to get the bag this summer. He is going to get a lot of money, whether it's from the Knicks, whether they trade him to a team and a trade for a superstar, and I'll tell you how I feel about that in a little bit. Whether it's with the Knicks or somebody else, Emmanuel quickly is going to be a very rich man very, very soon. And honestly, he deserves it. I mean, I love the fact that the guy only missed one game this season, and he averaged 15 points, four assists pretty much, four rebounds, and he was so efficient from the deck, 44.8% from the field, 37.0% from downtown, but the, the impact from quickly goes so much deeper than just the stats. He's one of the best on-ball perimeter defenders in the league. He's a very smart defender. He's kind of the Knicks defensive play caller when he's out on the floor. He's always calling out what the other team is going to do. And I also like that he can play the point or the two. That's why the Knicks were so good during the regular season. Because whether it was quickly running the show or Brunson running the show, they had a guy that could do that. And that's kind of what hurt them in the playoffs when quickly got hurt and wasn't his same self. But what does a guy that puts up 15 points per game get paid in the NBA? So we're going to go through the highest paid guards in the NBA for the 2023 NBA season. Obviously, I don't think Emmanuel Quick is going to get paid top 10 money. He's not getting paid 52 mil like Curry. And he's not getting paid 35.8 million like CJ McCollum. So then you get to the second tier of the highest paid players. And I still don't think Emmanuel quickly is in this list, but I could argue that he is just as good of a player as Kyle Lowry and Jordan Poole. I think we're getting warmer and warmer though with this third tier of players. Because I think he is in that same class of Tyler Hero and Anthony Simons and Terry Rozier and Fred Van Fleet, Malcolm Brogdon, Eric Gordon, and Spencer Dinwiddie. And then I think he's a little bit better than these guys. I think he's going to get more. I think he's going to get about $20 million per year because he's better than Joe Harris, just as good if not better than Buddy Heald, and he's younger. Bogdan Bogdanovich is a similar type of player, a, point, a big point score off the bench. Mark Smart on one of the best value deals of the NBA. The guys like Tim Hardaway Jr., Norman Powell, and Colin Sexton. So that kind of gives you an idea of what $20 million in the NBA would get you. So I want to ask you this question. $20 million per year for Emmanuel quickly. Over, are you paying him more than that? Or are you paying him less than that? Or you're not doing it. If you're paying him more, type over. If you're not paying him that, type P for pass down in the comment section. I want to hear from you down below. We're going to look at some in-depth stats on Emmanuel quickly and talk about the rumors of him potentially getting traded. But first, you need to trade in those old gym shorts and get hooked up with Bird Dogs, our awesome sponsor of today's show. Go to birddogs.com and use the promo code chat. That link is clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. I'm rocking with Bird Dogs because they meet the wants of what I want in a short. One, they look good. Two, they feel good. And then three, they have a whole bunch of different styles that can fit for whatever you got going on. Whether you're going to work, whether you're going to work out, whether you're going to grab some drinks with the homies, whether you're going on a date, going swimming, hanging out by the pool, or just lounging at the house. 
Bird Dogs has a pant or a short that fits every single occasion, and you're never going to feel underdressed. I promise you, you guys are going to love them. I, I love them as well. I was wearing them this weekend when I was hanging out by the pool with all the real ones here at Chat Sports. I promise you, you're going to love them. They're the shorts of the summer. Just go right here, birddogs.com. Use the promo code chat. They're going to hook you guys up with a free, free Yeti-style tumbler for free. Get it. Let's go. I'm going to be honest. As much as I love Emmanuel quickly and how proud I was of him taking a step in his third season in the NBA to Kentucky, the playoff performance was concerning, and I think everybody has to at least admit that a little bit. Think about it like this. The guy averaged 15 points per game in the regular season. He shot above 45% from the field, and he shot 37% from three. All of those numbers fell off a cliff in the eight games that he played in the playoffs before he got injured and didn't finish the last three games. 15 points down to nine points. Almost four rebounds down to one and a half. Four plus assists down to one. 45 plus percent from the field down to 34. And I understand it's harder to take shots, get shots, make shots. But look, Emmanuel quickly has to play better in the playoffs. We're going to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Just a second playoff run. The first one getting major minutes. But at the end of the day, he has to be able to create more offense in that half court and just be better for the Knicks. But overall, I want to keep Emmanuel quickly for a whole bunch of different reasons. One, he's a damn good basketball player. Two, he's entering just his fourth season in the NBA, and I don't even think he's finished or close to the product that he's going to be when it's all said and done. I don't think he's even scratched the ceiling of the player he can be. He is a two-way guard that can start, come off the bench, score, facilitate, defend, and rebound. You don't really see those type of players really that often in the NBA. Not saying he's a superstar, not saying he's a star, but he's a winning piece in the Knicks. They need to keep a guy like that. The Knicks are going to get trade calls on Emmanuel quickly, no doubt about it. We know the Knicks have primed themselves over the past couple of years to be put in a spot where they can make a big-time trade. And with how well Emmanuel quickly played this year, his trade value has gone up, and now the Knicks, anytime they make a trade or there's talks of them trading for an NBA superstar, that other team is going to want Emmanuel quickly, and deservedly so. He's a damn good player, and he's a young player at that. And Ian Begley, he echoed that. He said, I think any team that calls on a significant trade is going to be asking about quickly. I think it comes down to, are they going to make that big move this summer, or are they going to wait? Then Bondi replied to Begley and said, look, Brunson's on a big contract. Randall's on a big tr contract. Barrett's on a big co contract. Hart and Quickly could be on big contracts, and that's your squad. And if you're if you're paying all those guys big money, that's really who you're going to have to rock with. And I'm okay with that. But even though Quickly may get the bag, he is going to be a great trade chip. The dude is so freaking good, and I believe that he may even be the Knicks' second best trade chip on this roster. I mean, when you look at what the Knicks have at their disposal, obviously Jalen Brunson is their number one trade chip. They're not trading him, though. I kind of struggled, and I went back and forth. Is Barrett number two? Is Quickly number two? Is Grimes number two? I went with Barrett because he's the youngest, and he has to average 20 points per game in the playoffs. I got Emmanuel Quickly number three. I almost flip-flopped Quickly and Grimes. I think two through four could be interchangeable. You know, pick your style right there. But I think one through four are great. And then five could be Mitchell Robinson or Julius Randle. And I think Robinson, after just dominating Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, younger than 25 years old and making less than $15 million per year, is a very valuable player as well. But honestly, not just quickly, any of those guys on screen, I'm only moving Emmanuel quickly in a move for a superstar. I'm not making a move for Emmanuel quickly or trading Emmanuel quickly just to do it. If I am trading quickly, if I'm trading Grimes, if I'm trading Barrett or Robinson, I'm only doing it for a talent upgrade in the starting lineup. I got to be getting a superstar back if I'm shelling out one of these kids that I think actually has legit potential down the road. And the reason I love Emmanuel quickly so much is not only what he can do as a bench piece, coming off the bench and kind of taking over the game, being a scorer, being a microwave and getting hot, he could do it in the starting lineup. I mean, he started 21 games this year. That's a fourth of the season. And he averaged 23-5 and almost six while doing it on 47% from the deck and 40% from downtown. The dude is a hooper, and I know we're going to remember the playoffs for the rest of the summer. But let's not just forget about everything else, and let's not sell low on Emmanuel quickly. Let's not just trade in his stock while it's maybe at a little bit lower point than it was when the regular season wrapped up because he struggled in the playoffs. A lot of people struggle in the playoffs. He's a 22, 23-year-old kid that just played his 13th playoff game in his NBA career. 
He's got a long way to go. He's going to continue to get better. And I hope he's a part of the New York Knicks for a very, very long time. I'm a very, very strong advocate of Emmanuel quickly. But he's got to get better, and he will continue to get better. It's something he's done every single year in the NBA. So what should the Knicks do with Emmanuel quickly? We will close out the show asking this question. Should they trade him as a part of that superstar deal? Don't know who that superstar is. We've talked about a whole bunch on the channel. Would you trade him in a deal for that guy? Or are you going to pay him four years, let's say $100 million? Are you paying him $25 million per, or are you trading him? Type T for trade, or you're typing E for you would extend him and give him an extension. As always, shout out to the real ones for tuning in to Knicks Now by Chat Sports. If you made it this far in the video, hit that thumbs up icon. And if you want to talk some more Knicks hoops, hit me up on Twitter at Lee.